morning. This is Arnie Waters here at Waters Capital in Boston, Massachusetts. Gold is trading up <clears throat> about $25 this morning. Uh, we don't necessarily see a big move uh, happening from here. As we indicated to you, uh, viewers at home, now is the time for you to keep your money at home. We've actually got some really interesting fixed income ideas uh, that we've been putting into our portfolios. If you'd like to get up to date on those, please don't hesitate to give me a jingle on 781-380-8888. Um, I am struck by the combination of uh, similarities between Russia and China. Both these countries have vaunted state security apparatuses and operate within the sphere of little or no political freedom, regardless of how much money you make. This has the effect exactly as happened in the Arab autocracies and monarchies of causing the people who have the most vested interest in the society to rebel. In the 50s, there were these things called revolutions of rising expectations throughout Central and South America. They were caused primarily by people like lawyers and doctors who wouldn't take the crap anymore. That is exactly what is happening in the Soviet Union, I'm sorry, in Russia and in China. The people who are prospering under the regime, they're prospering economically, but they're not prospering in terms of quality of life or in terms, obviously, of political freedom. So these people are very disturbed and, as we've discussed frequently, moving their money overseas, blah, blah, Russian oligarchs knowing what's good for them, keeping their money in England and Switzerland and their yachts in Croatia and all that sort of thing. <coughs> Taken together in China, with a large number of uh, uprisings by the regular people, we see that both Russia and China will be fertile for extreme political disruptions over the next few years. What this will lead to, I don't know. But I do know it's not good for the Chinese economy. And since I know that, that leads me to believe that we will have an even stronger support for the United States economic system. And you will recall, doubtless, that except for a few nutty people, no Americans or Englishmen or Canadians or Australians have gone to live in China and Russia. Nobody from China wants to come any place other in the countries I just mentioned, with the United States being the destination of choice. I'm particularly, I'm particularly pleased to note that Senator Schumer, a very wise man, therefore because I agree with him, uh, has offered a program whereas if you are a home, owner, home buyer or an investor who starts a company in the United States, you're allowed to come into this country without further ado. I think this is a brilliant approach. But back to the case at hand. Political disruption, political uncertainty remains very good for gold. We have reinstated our goal for gold of 2450 in 2012. We believe very strongly that more and more, notice I haven't talked about the euro, more and more political situations will occur which redound to the benefit of gold buyers. You will also doubtless have noted, if you've been following our commentaries for the last few years, that what we've gone through in the last couple of months, indeed in the last couple of weeks, perhaps in the last couple of days, is an exact replica of what happened three years ago in the summer of 2008. It is our view that we may likely see another 50% jump up from here, as we saw at that time. But this is a professional trading market. It is not a market going through a year-end where people at home should be putting their money in gold. And if you've been a faithful correspondent, you know that you've got big profits in gold, and we encourage you to repatriate some of those to your own account. I'm also interested to note that 
there have been tremendous inflows of funds from equity and commodity mutual funds into money markets. People are accepting the fact that they will get nothing in the money market, but they won't get hammered either. A last comment for today. The euro, excuse me, European banks who want dollars this week are being charged one and a half percent. This is absolutely unheard of. That means that if you want dollars, if you're a European bank and you want dollars and you want $100, you have to pay $101.50 to get $100. That's pretty scary. This is Arnie Waters. Aim for the ice flows, not the open water. Have a peaceful weekend and enjoy the beginning of the holiday season. Thanks.